Greetings and salutations. Thanks for clicking on the video. This one's just for fun. I was going through a box of computer stuff yesterday looking for a hard drive and I came across a CD which was an install disk for Ubuntu 1010. It had been in that box, well, I guess for a long time now, seven years, right? Ubuntu 1010 was one of my favorite versions of Ubuntu when it was out because everything just worked really well and I had it running in a dual boot with Windows 7 way back when so I figured I would check it out here and you guys could see what I see I have ripped the disk image into an ISO file and hooked it up to this Ubuntu 1604 virtual machine and I'm gonna boot it up for the first time and you guys can see what happens and we'll take a look around and see what Ubuntu 1010 looked like. I remember it being a very good distro. I've got another video up here somewhere where I have a installation guide that I did for a webcast I was doing about this time where I go through installing Ubuntu 1010. So far it doesn't look terribly different from what we get today, does it? And here it comes. Found the network. That's good. And we will try Ubuntu. I'm not going to try and install this because the repositories for Ubuntu 1010 are long since gone. And I got the nice Ubuntu start sound. I don't know how much of that you heard. Miss that. That's something that they ought to put back. At least make an option. Okay, let's see if we can make this screen a little bigger. See what we can do here. System monitor. No, I don't want that. I want preferences. Monitors. And the screen resolutions that we can choose from. 800 by 600 or 640 by... 480. No, that's not going to do, but that's okay. What we can do here is use a feature in VirtualBox to scale the screen and make it bigger. So let's see here. Where is that? It's under View, Scale Factor. Let's try 150. That's a little too big. Back to where I was, please. Thank you. Let's do 125. Well, we can put this in full screen mode. Yeah, I know. Switch. I updated virtual box not too long ago. Now let's try this thing. I guess that's the best we're going to be able to do. Yeah. Because if I go to 150, it's going to be too big. Nope just about fills the screen that's perfect okay so we have Ubuntu 1010 running from a live image and if you are one who is using the Ubuntu Mate desktop you will no doubt notice immediately that it looks pretty dang close to what Ubuntu Mate looks like when you install it and that is because the Mate desktop is based on GNOME 2 this is GNOME 2 proper this was the release before they went to Unity as the default desktop. I think they started that in 11.04. I think. Okay. Not really sure about that. Let's see what we get with the system. We got a calculator. We got a character map. Disk usage analyzer. Manage print jobs. And then we can search for files. We can take a screenshot. We got a terminal. We got a text editor. And Tomboy Notes. Everybody was really big on Tomboy Notes seven or eight years ago in the Linux world. Got a few games in here. Under graphics, we get openoffice.org draw, and we get Shotwell, and we get Simple Scan. And then under internet, we get Empathy, Evolution Mail. They switched to Thunderbird sometime after this. Firefox Web Browser, Gwibber social client, remote desktop viewer, terminal server client, and we've got transmission for BitTorrents. 
under Office, we get a Dictionary, Evolution Mail, Open Office Presentation, Spreadsheet, and Word Processor. And for Sound and Video, we get the Bracero Disc Burner. We get a Movie Player. We get the PTV Video Editor, Rhythm Box Music Player, and Sound Recorder. And then, let's see, I don't know whether we'll... Let's open that and see what happens. Probably not going to work because we're not hooked up to any of the repos, but that's what the, what they call it back then, the software center looked like then. And you could search for different things. I don't know whether it's going to let us search for stuff or not. Oh no, it's working. Okay, then we have places, and then over here we've got preferences, and this stuff is pretty much going to be the same as what you would get in the current Mate desktop, although I don't see a link anywhere for the control center. Let me see if that's here. Well, maybe they didn't have the control panel. Don't know. Default web browser was Firefox. Let's see what version you got. See if it connects to anything. Well, it connected to Google. And let's look at about Mozilla Firefox. 3.6.10. So it probably if you went to any website these days, it probably wouldn't work because it would say that it was out of date. See what happens when we go to YouTube. Yeah, oops, your web browser is no longer supported. So YouTube's not going to work. Ubuntu 10.10 was interesting in that this was the first version of Ubuntu that lets you install all of the third-party codecs right up front. It was when they introduced the feature where you could just click a box at install and install those codecs, which was really nice because before that it was quite a pain to get things like Flash Player and MP3 playback going in Ubuntu. What else can we look at while we're here? Well, let's pull up a terminal. I'm just curious uh, what this does. Make that a little bigger. Yeah. Oh, that's right. No apt. This is before apt. We had to use apt get. And of course, it's not going to work. It's just going to throw a bunch of errors because the Ubuntu 10.10 archives have been all taken down since it is a no longer supported version of Ubuntu. What kernel did we get in here? Two point six point three five dash two two generic. That's the kernel. So this is where we've come from in seven years with Ubuntu and Linux. This is where it was in two thousand and ten. Let's see what this is up here. No, oh, I clicked on it and it went away. Sorry, the program DNSD is closed unexpectedly. Well, that's a problem now, isn't it? No, I'm not going to report the problem. I doubt very seriously whether the Ubuntu developers are going to be worried about something not working in Ubuntu 10.10. This was also, I believe, the first menu that when you opened up a music player, it would integrate in with that sound. Let's see if it does it. Yep, so you could control rhythm box from here. That was a big deal back then. Of course, now that's pretty much expected with most of the advanced desktops. And it's telling us that the MP3 plugins are not installed. And you would be able to click here and it would go get them. Of course, I'm not going to do that. I get the calendar here. And this is the widget that lets you. Log in, suspend, hibernate, restart, and shut down. What is this? 
Oh, this is for users. Yep. And the email is set up chat, set up mail, set up broadcast account. So it was a pretty simple system. This is one of the reasons that a lot of folks really threw a fit when Ubuntu went to Unity because they've gotten so used to using this system and this is actually very simple to use and you got things like GNOME Flashback and of course Ubuntu Mate that attempt to bring this technology into the modern world of Linux because this this was just from a workflow point of view so easy to use back then there is no control center See what's under examples. Well, there's an AUG. played surprisingly well because this virtual machine there are no accelerated drivers none of that's installed so this is actually operating in 2d and then they gave you some sound in there and you notice that when you close the rhythm box player and it actually closed if you just hover over something it starts to preview it that's a nice feature that they had in GNOME 2. I think you can turn that on in Mate or it already works. So anyway, that's kind of fun. I just wanted to see if this would boot up and what it looked like. And there you go. That's what it looks like right there. So, awesome. So let's go ahead and set this back to where it needs to be for my... Thank you. Didn't want to stick there. Take that out of full screen. And we will shut down. The whole thing, by the way, fits on a CD. And it looks like it uh, may be locking up on shutdown all kinds of weird error messages up there and it's not doing anything let's see if we press enter what happens nothing oh it just closed okay it worked it closed itself down didn't prompt us to remove the media either so yeah gang that's Ubuntu 1010 I like to take a look at those things every now and again especially when I come across one of my old installer images and I remember being just so excited about it, it ejected the disk that's good I remember being so excited about Ubuntu 10.10 because it brought so many new features to the table. And of course, nowadays, we've got Ubuntu 16.04, 16.10, and working our way up to 17.04. What a huge difference. You know what I mean? Go ahead and boot up the Ubuntu 16.04 desktop just to do a little quick comparison here. And then we'll wrap things up. While that's doing its thing, let me remind you to check out Easy Linux on the web. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook. Lots of stuff happening over there. I know some of you guys don't like Facebook. No need to put that in the comments. You don't have to go there if you don't want to. We also uh, have FreedomPenguin.com that you need to check out if you haven't already because FreedomPenguin.com has lots of great stories about Linux. And this is taking its sweet time to actually load up. There we go. I have it set up where it opens up a terminal. So this is Ubuntu 16.04, which is the current long-term support release version. And that's strange. Oh, I see my controls are up under the panel there. 
So this is what the Unity desktop looks like. Compare that to what we were just looking at. And you see the big difference. It's like this is a bit more complicated <laughs> compared to the old GNOME 2 desktop. So, And I don't hate Unity. I have posted in the past that I, I, I kind of like Unity. I'm not one of those haters. It's not my favorite desktop to work with. But, you know, when you look at the functionality of GNOME 2, it makes you scratch your head and wonder what everybody was thinking. It really does sometimes. So thanks for watching, gang. We'll do it again soon. Talk to you later.